everybody, it's Sharon here. Welcome back to my channel for those who are returning and welcome to any new subscribers that may be visiting for the first time. I wanted to have a little play with some pockets and the inspiration for this little craft with me has come from Attic Lane and a video that she posted. I watched it a little while back. I've actually just been trying to figure out where the idea came from because I couldn't remember I watched it so long ago. It was a video that she posted and it was called Junk Journal Tags from Simple to Simply Splendid number five, I believe. And if I can, I will link that video in the description below for you. Now, this idea was used on tags in that video, but I wanted to do something similar with pockets. So I have here my brown paper. We've talked about that in a number of videos, so I'll leave it at that. And this is the triple layer brown paper. So I want to create pockets, and I've decided to go this hot, this width, sorry, and I want them to be about three inches high, I'm thinking. So they'll be quite a large pocket. Um, and I measured it against my journal that I'm working on. I'll just grab that and I'll show you. Sorry about that. So this is the journal I'm working on and if I pop this in there, it's not quite the width of the page, but very close to. So I really liked the way that looked on the page. And it's probably a third of the height so I've decided to go with that I really like that my lace is falling out I still haven't inked around my pages yet I have been so busy behind the scenes organizing and collecting and gathering and goodness knows what else I don't know about you guys I just don't have enough hours in a day so, so I'm going to go with three inches. I'm going to do a few while I'm at it. So I'm not 100% sure where this will lead me, but I have a couple of little ideas in my head. So I just thought I'd have a play. Turn the camera on while I'm doing it. There's no no wrong when you're creating, is there? I don't think there is. Okay, so I have four pockets here. And I'm going to... Okay, so I want to do them all slightly different. And I'm going to start with, hmm, I'm going to gesso two of them. So I might take, I'm thinking those two because it's slightly imperfect along the edge. I've got an idea of something I can do with that. So I'm going to use these two. And I've just got my gesso here. So again, I'm using the Deriven. Gesso, it was easily accessible in my area. I think I got it from Spotlight. Don't quote me on that. And I've got my tile here. So I do want to water it down a little bit. I forgot to get my little spray bottle of water. Here we go. So I've just got some distilled water in this bottle and my paintbrush. Sorry guys, I just bumped the camera stand. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of that on there. I do want to water it down just a tad. I'm thinking I've got way too much on there. OK, 
Okay, just checking my focus. And I'm just going to brush it lightly. I'm hoping you can see okay. <laughs> this brush, I really need to find something that's not going to hit the camera for you. I'm so sorry. And I have had this little project in mind for a while. I just haven't... It's taken me a while to get my head around how I wanted to put it into play. Actually, I might do three tags... Uh, sorry, three tags with the gesso, I'm thinking. I've got plenty there, so... Okay, so that's one. I'll leave that to dry and see how it comes out. If I find it's too light, I can always add another layer. Okay. I'll do that side. We've had a really cool change here the last couple of days. It is only about 12 degrees today. Very fresh. So my fire is going. So now before I sit down and do a video, I have to make sure I prep my fire so it doesn't go out while I, I tend to get focused when I'm creating, whether the camera is on or not and the fire is actually in a, a separate room to where I am right now so I can't actually see what it's doing and if I get too focused it goes out and I don't realize until I start to get cold and by that stage it can be very close to being out altogether so now before I turn the camera on I have to make sure I stoke the fire so I don't freeze okay so again just a nice light coating sorry if I'm shaking the camera with the brush I'm not doing it intentionally I'm pretty happy with that so I may just see if I can pop this leftover gesso back in the container not sure that that will blend back in successfully but at least I tried and I'm just going to wet this so I can Clean it up. If I was more organised, I would have had something here that I could use it on, but I can't think off the top of my head what I can use, so I don't actually know if gesso will reactivate with water. I maybe we'll try that at another time. Like we did with the watercolour when we left it on the tile. I may be able to reactivate it by wetting it once it dries. Which would be awesome. I'm really wishing I had have got a couple of these tiles when I was given the opportunity but you live and learn. I didn't know then that I would love it so much. Okay so they're my 
my pockets as they are and I don't maybe I will just quickly use my heat tool just to make sure that they're dry properly okay sorry guys just putting a lid on my water before I lose it Two stamps here one is my script and one is my music stamp and I have my timber brown stays on which is featuring throughout this journal and just going to grab some stamp paper oops sorry Use this one. And it doesn't need to be, I don't know if you can see that on the acetate, I've actually put a, a T so I know which way around it goes. Every time I use this stamp, I was second guessing which, which way the orientation should be. And I don't know, I had a light bulb moment one day and went, if I just mark it, I will know and I can stop wasting time trying to figure it out. Okay. So that's one and I'll do one more with this stamp and then I'll do the other two with the music. I'm not looking for perfection, this is just background noise. Okay, and just cleaning off my stamp. So that's those two with the script stamp and then so they're both Kaiser Craft stamps this one is called sheet music sorry and the other is called script hope you can see that okay so they are the two stamps that I'm using. So again, I've marked it with a T so I know which orientation I need to have it. I quite often leave them on the acetate, especially when I'm using them as background. It, I'm not looking for a perfect impression of the stamp. So if that's the case, rather than taking them off the acetate, I just use them on the acetate. And that becomes my stamping block. And I will re-ink it just so it has a uniform look. not bad and then the second one
Okay. I could feel it catching and I couldn't figure out this little corner here was popping up. I've got really nice gesso fingers at the moment. Okay, and then I'll just clean that stamp off again. Fabulous. Pop those aside. Okay, so that gives us our four, our four pockets, sorry. And I'm going to ink around each of them. I haven't decided yet whether I'll put a, a thumb hole, so if I choose to do that later I can ink around that spot Sorry guys, I went quiet because I was thinking about my next step, trying to remember what I was doing with each of them. So the plain brown one, I'm going to leave it like that until my next step. So I'm going to pop that one aside. Okay, so now I've done that, I'm going to pop those to my left, so I'm going to do this one next and I'm just going to find my card, so I just have an old iTunes card that I use and I'm going to use the stays on and I'm just going to pop some noise lines probably in the opposite corners I'm thinking. And then in the opposite direction. Okay, I quite like that. And I just want to clean that card off. And then I want something. I might try this lid. So this is off my little distilled water spray bottle.
like I said, I'm really just playing because, well, I can. I want a couple going off the page. Okay, I quite like that. And I'm just cleaning my lid, sorry. I'm like, they don't need to see me cleaning, so I pull it away from you. I mean, I realise that you're just looking at a, a screen that's nothing, there's nothing happening. Okay, so that one I'm going to set aside. And then I think one of these I will set aside for the next step as is. And then this one. Whoops. This one I might have a little play with some colour. So I have my Distress Inks here. And my tile. So this is the Victorian Velvet. Which is a really pretty dusty, dusty pink which I love. And I have the shaded lilac. And I'm thinking, I'm just thinking of the colours of my papers. So I'm thinking the broken china. Such a bright colour that one. And do I want a green? I'm not sure that's the right green. Don't I? I might put a little bit on there and have a think about it. I'm just looking at the colour and I'm not sure it's going to work. I'm not sure it's the right shade. So this is what I'm seeing. doesn't have enough yellow in it although it's very similar to that except this the paper is more of a blue than it's more that I don't know about the green maybe I'll leave that okay but that gives me three to play with so that's fun and I'm going to what am I going to do guys so I was watching Andrea from Artie Mays this morning and I don't remember which video it was that I was watching she was having a little play with some what was she making oh she was decorating a page it was so pretty I was so inspired um just a blank page that she had in a journal she was working on and she was turning it into the prettiest paper so she used some ink and a wet one for baby wipe and was just adding and I don't know how well this will come out because I have the background I have and I'm not sure if it will lift the gesso so just having a play with some colour hoping it's focused for you and it's just subtle because as you know the papers I'm using are quite pastel so I don't want it to be too loud And they are very subtle but so pretty and quite vintagey on the 
brown background. Okay, that one's not coming out so clearly. I'll try the green and see how it goes. My gesso has lifted just a fraction there. So I'm going to add a little bit more ink. Actually, I can have a play with this blue. And I'm going to use my card again. Let's see what I can get. Okay, and maybe the pink. Actually, I may even do oh, that's pretty. Okay, some of this will be covered over when we do the next step. So this is all just part of the background. I might try the lilac, see if we can get that one to stand out a bit more. It's all going to be very subtle. Just creating a little bit of interest in the background. And I'm finding the brown paper is absorbing the colour a lot too. So if you were doing something like this on a lighter colour, it would probably stand out a whole lot more. And I think that will do us. Okay, so I just need to stop the camera and move it around for the next part because I'm going to use my sewing machine. And so I'll turn I'll turn the camera off and set that up and then come back on. It won't be a moment. Hello everybody, I'm back again. So I've got my sewing machine set up. And I just have it on a zigzag and I have some book paper here with my card underneath and I have you zoomed in quite close so that you can see properly hoping it will be a good angle for you and I'm just going to do strips of sewing down the book page and actually I might I might tear the book page just so that I can see the edges just bear with me so I've just taken the strip off the top sorry of the book page and I'm going to measure it against my card on my pocket and just tear it to size so that I can see where I'm sewing OK, 
Okay, so now I have this. So it's the same size as my pocket underneath. And I'm just going to sew random strips down the page. So no rhyme or reason. And I don't want them all to be the same length. I want them all to be different. threads off I will do that later I'm hoping that's focusing okay for you I feel like it keeps bouncing out of focus and I don't know why Sorry, I'll try and be more aware of that as I'm sewing. Oops. <laughs> this is why I don't sew on camera because I am not a sewer. Okay, and I might do one more. So I'm thinking about here. And you possibly don't have to double sew, but I do like to do that. to go across as well so I've got quite a large area here that doesn't have anything in it so a little one and I'm literally just eyeballing this so there's no right or wrong and maybe across the top The next one I do, I'll try and zoom out a little bit for you so that you can see more of the card while I'm working. Okay, so just see if I can zoom you out a little bit. So this is what I'm left with. As you can see, I've got stitching going up and down and horizontally. So that's then ready for our next step. So I'll quickly do... Um, the rest of what I have here. 
Sorry, I'm just trying to work out what paper I'm using where. So I'm using book paper again and I'm just tearing the bottom of it to make it the same height as my pocket. So it's roughly the same height and I'm just going to repeat the process, same but different. Actually ducking under the camera to try and see what I'm doing there. The camera is kind of at my eye level. Whoops, and I've just lost my cotton. itself into a tizzy at the top so just bear with me and I'll fix it up it wasn't that long ago that I wouldn't have been able to do this on camera because I literally didn't know how to thread a sewing machine I, every time I went to do it I had to google to got some dust bunnies in here I don't want dust bunnies yes I had to google thank goodness for google to figure out how to thread my sewing machine quite embarrassing but I was never interested in sewing until I started this process Now I'm kind of proud of myself of the fact that I can do it. I was talking to my mum about it recently and I was like, who knew? Who knew I would know how to use a sewing machine in some small fashion of understanding? I don't claim to be an expert by any means. have to excuse my really dry hands my hands dry out really badly when we've got the fire going I mean I have problems with that anyway but just in the last week or so they've become really bad again And this is an experiment for me. I haven't actually done this before. I, as I said, I saw the video quite some time ago. And it's been in my mind since. But I haven't been brave enough to play with the idea till now. leave that one like that so I just have the vertical stitches okay and this next one so the next one I have to play with is this one with the script 
and I'm thinking I might use a piece of music paper over the top so it doesn't really matter what paper you use and again I'm just tearing that to size just so I have a rough idea of where I'm stitching to so again I've just torn that to size to fit my pocket I've just noticed my writing is upside down, so I need to turn that around. Lucky that was on there. And I might go horizontal with these. As I said, I want them to be similar but different. So we'll start off horizontal and see where we go. workhorse scissors they're starting to struggle a little bit bitty one I might do one down here As you can see, I have amazing control when I sew. <laughs> oh my goodness. As long as I get it done, right? And... And you can have as much or as little stitching on here as you want. side just getting my wispy threads out of the way and that might 
be enough for that one. And then lucky last is the one with the colours. And as you can see, they are just, they're quite subtle, but just a little bit of interest. And I feel like I want to try something different. I don't know. Don't know how this will go, guys. This one is a huge experiment. So I'm just tearing some of my coloured tea stain paper. Just getting a couple of strips. And I'm going to sorry, I'm I'm trying to do this on camera, but it's not not working very well because I don't really have a lot of space between the camera and the sewing machine. So popping that on there like that. I don't know how this one will go. I'm making this up as I go. And then okay, so this is what I have. So I have the green, the purple, and the pink tea stain paper. And get ready for the experiment. So to start with, I'm going to go vertically, oh, sorry, horizontally. I don't even know which way up I'm right now. Okay, and then about there. reason for this and I can take my paper clips off now because that's secure on there Sorry, I'm just pulling my threads to the sides because I'm thinking I want to do one in here and about there. a long one in here I think Here. And where? 
be an itty bitty down this side. Down here, I'm thinking. Okay, and done. So I'll turn the camera off and turn you back around and we'll go to the next step. Won't be a moment. <laughs>